Good morning, guys. Trademo James here. What's up? Oh, give me just a second, guys. I'm looking at something real quick. Let's let some more people get in here. Give me one moment. Dax Dog Ranch, what's up, man? Good morning. I am just doing some top-down analysis right now for Mavis. I'm looking back to the left over here in 2009. We are at that zone again, so I think I really do think we're going to find some demand here, guys, on Mavis somewhere around here. Uh, I really believe it. 2009, trading at $6 and, what is this, 31 cents back in March 2009. Big demand zone here, actually. Took us up to about 46 bucks. Uh, wait, I take that back. 48 bucks. No, 46.10. 46.10. Uh, so, I mean, we could find some demand here. These zones, I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but it looks promising. It looks promising for a for a big demand zone around this price. Zoom out, you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about if you guys are, have your charts pulled up. Why is my chat not working? Oh, there we go. Guys, make sure you hit that like button if you're just joining. Good morning. Uh, guys, make sure you check out CTXR. They just did... What did CTXR do? I know it wasn't for the Mino Lock, but they did just release some news. Sidious Pharmaceuticals completes enrollment in the pivotal phase 3 study of its cancer immunotherapy. On tack for the, for the treatment of... What does this say? Cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. All right. Well, that's uh, that's still good news. And it's December, so I think CTXR is going to move here pretty soon. Uh, if you guys are in CTXR, definitely check it out. Look at the price action real quick. All right. Respecting the 50 on the one house with the daily, actually. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, nice, nice, nice little zone here. Uh, this looks promising. And we're right there at it, too. So uh, this looks kind of promising, actually, for, you know, price action wise. Uh, big ass double double bottom here, big old double bottom. <clears throat> I'm trying to get going myself. I am tired. All right, good morning, Joseph Garcia. What's up? All right, we have a nice indecisive candle here. I don't know. C takes are my move. I, I think if it's not this month, it's gonna be next month where we get some movement. I think we're already at what is it six percent for the day? Uh, about six percent. All right, three point seven eight percent. It was up six percent. Uh, we came up to about $1.61, uh, and I do think if, if we break this trend line here, we're definitely going to move. Uh, if we break this one right here, we're likely going to move here. I guess, yeah, we'll do it like that. We'll do it like that. All right, look to take a scalp. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to scalp this one uh, if we do break this trend line. I am going to scalp this for a day trade uh, when we break this trend line and take profit at the 50 estimate. Just so you guys know, I had already planned on doing this a couple days ago because I was looking at this chart. If we break this trend line from this demand zone, I'm going to be scalping to the 50 SMA and taking profit at the 50 SMA on a separate account, not my bag holding account. Oh my God. What's up, James Jones? Make sure you guys hit that like button on this video. And tell me your guys' plays for the day. You guys make any plays today? Are you just, are you just watching our, watching this bloody red market? I don't know when it's gonna correct, but I think when this thing does finally correct, man, this is it's gonna move. The market's gonna shift violently. 
I don't know when. I don't know when. Uh, but this, the whole market is just trash these days. It's so bad. It is very, very, very bad. Uh, it's a, it's, it's creating a lot of bag holding. But I think that uh, it's gonna correct at some point in the near future. I really do. It has to, right? I mean, you would think. If not, well, I don't know. Auntie M, good morning. Thank you for being here. Anyways, guys, this is a good play. Uh, this is uh, kind of a basic setup here, but I will tell you this much. Uh, you're going to make some money if you take this. Uh, just keep in mind, we did we did bottom out on the RSI on tw at 27. So I, I think this is a great play uh, for a day trade or a scalp. And if you're trying to do something like that, this is, this is a good play. Uh, CTXR. Some people will disagree because of the downtrend, but uh, if we break, we, you know, this is a big demand zone. All right, look to the left over here. We have multiple big spikes out of this zone, uh, including this one. So one two three and now we're finally back down here for the fourth touch i think that we're going to break the trend line off this but i don't know we could come down more we could come down more and i'm only taking this trade i'm not taking the trade at the demand zone uh just so you guys know i'm not taking the trade at the demand zone i'm just taking it at wait i'm trying to read it you can't hear my mic oh my god are you kidding Thumbs up in the chat if you guys can hear me, please, so I know, because I've been talking for about five minutes, and I need to make sure you guys can hear me. <laughs> oh, man. Thumbs up in the chat if you guys can hear me, please. Because if not, i got to figure something out. I did, I did just reinstall some drivers, so that might be the problem. Give me, give me one second. I don't think you guys can hear me. Oh, man. Okay, Joseph says I'm on. I don't know, man. John, are you trolling me? Are you trolling me, John? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, turn your volume up, maybe. I don't know. So, I, I've noticed in the past for me, it's always something dumb like that where I've accidentally muted the... Muted uh, the channel or the video. All right, Derek in here. We're going to go with this. We're going to go with my mic is working. I don't know, John. Sorry. Um, anyways, guys, I'm not taking the trade at the demand zone. You can if you want to gamble. Uh, but I would, I'm would. i taking the trade at the break of this trend line. And this is just going to be for a quick scalp. Uh, and I'm going to take profit at the 50 SMA. So uh, somewhere hopefully around, you know, it's not going to be a crazy amount of money. Uh, but I am going to scalp this when we break the trend line. If we break the trend line. Uh, Microvision right now, 629 on the ticker. Uh, volume looking good for Mavis right now. We have about three, almost three million in volume. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, about three million, 2.5 million in volume, roughly. And like I said, guys, if you zoom out and you go, you know, you look to the left over here, this is a big zone. We found some crazy support here uh, back in 2009, which, yeah, that was a long time ago. But this zone, uh, I mean, it's only been hit one time. This, this, I mean... It, I don't know. I don't know how long these zones can last. To be honest with you, I don't. You know, but 2009 went from six dollars and ten cents up to about forty-six dollars. So that's a forty-dollar swing. That's insane. Oh my God! For the love of God, stock gods, please let us spike to forty-six dollars out of this zone. How insane would that be? I don't think it's gonna happen like that at this point, just because of everything going on but hey i mean we are in a descending wedge we are this is the weekly time frame so each candle represents one week of time seven days uh really five trading days uh but we i mean i don't think we're gonna go much lower than this i really don't it doesn't seem really logical to be honest if we do come lower than this i think we find the support here at this little zone here all right if we do come lower if we come lower i think we find support here but i don't know we could just keep going i guess i mean I guess we could just keep going. You look at the RSI, it's pretty low. Uh, what is it, about 32, 33 on the RSI, 34 on the weekly time frame. So it's getting, it's becoming oversold. All right, it's becoming oversold. The curse of Dwayne is upon us. Hey, James, you, oh, you're an OG. If you remember Dwayne? Oh my God, Dwayne guess Where's that guy? Uh, he. He, he broke even, I think, on this move. Uh, he, he definitely broke even. <laughs> Actually, he's probably in the green. He's probably in the green right now. <laughs> Freaking Dwangus. Oh, my God. 
But yeah, make sure you guys hit the like button. I'm hanging out uh, for about an hour today, about an hour, and I gotta get going. But I did want to get on for a little bit, and just hang out with you guys. Derek Hughes, what's up? Good morning. Oh, Mavis, drop some news, maybe. I mean, we did have news. That's what's crazy about Mavis. We had some good news. Uh, we had some really good news. And right now, they just, four days ago, actually, this came out. It says Microvision is a buy on autonomous driving technology growth. All right. I mean, I don't know why people aren't buying. Global demand for automotive LiDAR sensors is rising, obviously. Microvision is poised to take off with its first generation automotive long range LiDAR sensors, LRLs. Early investors are justifiably happy. It's easy to get sidetracked by the hustle of entrepreneurship, but patience is key. If you're patient enough, your investment will pay off in spades. And this is what is happening with Mavis stock. Hey, I mean, we're getting good news, man. I don't know. Maybe the shorts are, maybe they're just bringing this thing down so they can cover and get out. Hopefully that's what's happening. Uh, roughly 20% of the float is shorted. Just so you know, 18.87% of the float is shorted. The public float is 162.01 million. All right, so we do have quite a bit of shares floating around, but uh, you know, a lot of that's shorted. What are they gonna cover? I mean, at what point do they take profit? At what point do they stop? They're gonna drive this into the ground? I doubt it. I doubt it, it's not going anywhere. The company's not going anywhere. They're expanding, they're hiring new people, they're moving offices, uh, they're accepting shares instead of money. I mean, this company's not going anywhere. We know that. So at what point will they let up? What do you guys think? I don't really know. James Jones got a trade mode. You better not have did that. If you did, I got to see a picture though. But if you did, dude. I, I'm going to need to see a picture if you did that. That would be absolutely hilarious. You, uh, you know you made it when someone gets a tattoo of you. <laughs> I hope you got it on your forehead. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Definitely don't. Don't do that. Someone said, uh, someone was dead serious about it too. If this, if, if Mavis ever goes to 75 or higher, they're gonna get a tattoo. But I haven't seen that person in a while, so I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Mavis. Uh, CYBL on a big dip too. CYBL and Fern broke out to the bottom of these wedges here. Uh, big, big breakout on CYBL. Uh, like I said, I didn't know which way we were going to go. I just called for the breakout, right? 50 SMA. We could have found support here and, 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 and did something like that. All right, we could have did that instead, but we didn't. We are down here at this level of structure that I draw in. And guys, uh, this line was drawn in way before we came down here. So, I mean, just start identifying these levels. You can you can make these call outs like I do. It's not that difficult if you can just find them. Anyways, uh, right now we are at pretty much a, a decent level of structure. I can't see us coming down to this zone, but we might, uh, we might. A lot of people like CYBL and they just, what did they double their revenue from the last quarter? So I can't, <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't make sense that it's going down, but I think this, the, the rebound is gonna be violent with CYBL, so. Great price to get in. This entire area here is a good price. All right, this whole area. In between where price is right now, and down to this demand zone around 0 0.0120. Probably going to be happy if you put some money in here in the next six months. One second. All right. I did want to look at Ethereum. All right, oh yes, 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 that's right, ah, Ethereum. All right, so guys, right now, Ethereum, um, I added on two coins down here. Uh, if you guys are looking at the chart, I will show you this real quick. Uh, this little wedge thing I have drawn in here. If we break out, we're gonna move, right? That's just how it's gonna work with this one. And I think we're gonna break to the top. I think we're kind of just hovering around this, tr well, we are hovering around this trend line here. Uh, we already tested the demand zone. We tested that we, start we formed a new trend line. Uh, and I think they're probably likely going to come up to the 50, at least, and either and either resist or break through four $4,355. I think we just are for sure coming up there in the near in the couple next couple days, and uh, I think we come up to the supply zone up here. But I don't really want to make 
Uh, too much of an ambitious prediction because, I mean, crypto is on a big dip right now. But I, I just think that's what's going to happen with Ethereum. I still have my, my 10K um, prediction for this probably by the end of January, I think. I really do believe that. Some of that's speculation, but it just looks to be just continue. If you zoom out, you look at the, the higher time frames. I mean, this is just insanely bullish. Just making higher highs, having the 50% pullbacks, every move, right? Just really bullish, all right? 50% pullback on this move, all right? 50% pullback on this move, if I can grab it. All right, every move, just having a standard 50% pullback. Not, no real uh, retracements, just shallow retracements. All right, 50% pullback. I mean, you can see this, right? Thumbs up in the chat if you saw how I did that real quick. Let me remove all this stuff so you guys can see it. All right, look. On this move, 50% retracement. Price came down to this golden zone, bounced out. I'll do it again for y'all. On this move, 50% retracement down to the 50, right in the golden zone and bounced out. And on the third move, same thing right down to the golden zone and we've currently bounced out and we we're coming back down though we could we could come back down for a second test but like i said just steady growth here with ethereum i i don't think i don't see it stopping i don't see it just you know tanking off and going back down to 800 bucks i wish it did i would i swear i would just put so much money in this if it ever did that uh we could come down now this this dip could come down a little further uh, just based on what's happening in the world. Uh, but, you know, it just looks really bullish. Are you guys invested in Ethereum? Who, who in here has Ethereum? Anybody? Thumbs up in the chat if you have Ethereum. Where are you at, chat? You got 11 people in here. Ethereum's looking bullish. I think this will surpass Bitcoin one day soon. I just really do. Maybe not, but I think it will. It'll at least be competing in price. Uh, Corey Bixer says he has lots of F. Nice. Uh, but yeah, just nice, nice movement. Oh, man. <laughs> Negative 23. Nice. Hey, imagine buying Ethereum just uh, when it was like at one cent. Oh, man. That would have, I wish I would have. I wish I would have did crypto in 2017. I was just, I knew it was going to pop too. That's what's crazy. I knew it. I knew that crypto was just gonna just take off. What was Bitcoin at in 2017? I believe. I believe it was. Let's see, 2017. Yeah, about a thousand bucks. Imagine. Imagine just putting a uh, you know a thousand dollars in here. I mean, uh, getting ten basically ten Bitcoin. Uh, you'd be sitting pretty nice right now. Oh my god. And I remember this guy at poker. He would always talk about it in 2000. It was like 2000. Uh, what was it? Was it 18? 2017 2018 guy would not shut up about bitcoin every single day he was talking about it it's gonna go to 50,000 it's gonna go to 50,000 here's my number call me i never did <laughs> oh man uh william draken says i bought 4f for 147 dollars and sold when it went down ah man i know we all have stories like that that's the worst. I know. I sold. I mean, I sold Bitcoin for a, for a profit. I had some Bitcoin. We had. I think I had like how many did I have? I had like three or four Bitcoin. Uh, we bought them at like three thousand. All right. So I think I don't remember exactly how this played out, but we bought them. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Was it here? Oh yeah, yeah. It was at four thousand. So I bought them at here, uh, and I sold at the break of the fifty like an idiot. Uh, we made some money on it. If we'd have held, though, look at this. Oh, God. It's so tilting. So tilting to see all this. Uh, knowing that we could just be sitting on a gajillion dollars right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Make sure you guys hit the like button on this video, right? Please. Uh, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at shit real quick. I think this is going to jump any moment. I think any moment this is going to jump. I really do.
Especially if we get back up. And I could I could just draw I could just make the golden zone like this, because that was kind of exaggerating right here. But if I use this this touch point up here, we are still in the golden zone on the weekly. Uh, but let's see, I mean even even at the at the peak, uh, we're still trying to get back up above that 618 line on SHIB. And I think if we do that and we finally get back above, you know, 46, 48, uh, we're probably gonna run. We're, we're probably gonna run. As you can see, we did not close. We did not close back above that 38 line. We we kind of tested it. If we ever close above 56 uh, on a daily, you, this thing's gonna run. All right, this thing's gonna run. And we really didn't even close above the 50 when you look at it. I mean, we we kind of. I mean, we did technically close above it, but we did it with like. A double top type thing so that you see some downside on that that was uh, kind of predictable but if we ever close like you know uh, above this 50 SMA and above this golden zone with like some momentum which I think is gonna happen here pretty soon uh, we're this thing's probably gonna run are uh, you talking about Bitcoin Corey or Ethereum probably both right I mean yeah I think Bitcoin's going over 100. I, I really do. The institutions are not going anywhere. They just continue buying this. And I think, I don't know. I think that they're just going to definitely keep buying this. I mean, it just looks so bullish. It, it really does. It looks insanely bullish. Just in general, right? Oh, man. This would have been a... Golly, I wish I had just crazy liquidity lying around. I would have just loaded it here and bought like a couple of these. I wish. That was a good spot. 41,000 on the dip. People said I was crazy for my 53,000. They they gave me so much crap on Reddit. They really did. Because uh, I called this one perfect. I said 53,000. It came down to like 53,300. They said I was crazy for that. And look at the thing went down to 41,000. <laughs> Oh man! And I did say if we break the golden zone, wow, well, we're gonna come down to at least here, and we well we did. That was a huge dip. That was an insane dip. And you gotta you gotta understand that's not a, a retail trader selling. People have to know this. That's the whales getting in and out of the markets. This is not retail traders. Whenever you see a huge move like this, this is just uh, it's just not retail traders. No retail traders are taking profit up here. They're not. I mean, maybe some. You know, the, but the ones that I think I read yesterday that only around 400,000 wallets have over 100,000 Bitcoin. I mean, $100,000 in it, in Bitcoin. I don't know, I could be wrong. I, I did read that, though. I don't know how accurate that was, and I forgot where I saw it. But uh, if you guys know anything about that uh, article, I don't even remember where I saw it. But it literally said that uh, there's only around 400,000 wallets in the world that have over $100,000 of Bitcoin. I don't know if that's true or not. And I probably could find out pretty easily, but I'm just lazy. <laughs> but it sounds about right. It sounds about right. That sounds like a... That sounds right to me. I don't know. So that just means whales... That just means whales and institutions own most of Bitcoin, right? I mean, that's just what it means. And I think I also read that it takes about... F uh, oh, how much million was it? Uh, 400 million? Uh, about 400 million to move Bitcoin 2% either way. Uh, something like that. So, roughly, I think those are like rough numbers, but I think that's what I read. So, if this thing moved, oh, that was my headphones. If this thing moved this much, imagine how many, imagine the, the, the amount that was actually sold. <laughs> it's probably a lot. I mean, it was a lot for it to move like that. That's crazy. All right, that's crazy. 40%. Uh, I moved 40%, guys. That means you know how much money has to be moved around for that to happen? That, I mean, just like insane money. Like money you can't even fathom having has to be moving around for Bitcoin to drop 40%, all right, on this move. Uh, not 40% total on, on the entirety of the coin. I'm talking about just on this move. This was a 40%. That's crazy. Go back to Mavis. 
Mavis, Mavis. All right, one day Mavis is gonna pop. I'm gonna be so happy. Are you guys still in Microvision? Don't if you if you sold Microvision, that's cool. If you're still in, give me a thumbs up in the chat. How many of you are still holding Microvision? I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not selling. I don't know about you guys. I'm not selling. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. I think this is gonna just absolutely. I mean, when the market corrects, this is gonna take off. It really is. I, I truly believe it. And if we ever really get above that 50 SMA on the daily, uh, again, uh, like I said, we're just gonna rip. Last time we broke the 50 SMA on the daily, it was right here around 1484, and we went from that to $25. So that was a pretty big move. Uh, that was a really big move, actually. And that wasn't a pump and dump either. This looked like it might have been. I'm, I'm still surprised that it's down this low. I really am. Uh, you see that Apple is looking for a LiDAR company to partner with. No, I did not see that. Drop the link in the, uh, in the comments so I can click it. We can pull it up. I did not see that. I saw that they were making a car. I did not see anything about LiDAR, though. Uh, 2.5 million in volume for the day for Mavis. Uh, what is our 52 week? I it was that 28 bucks, yeah. Crazy. I mean, guys, this is a perfect example. I mean, Bitcoin, uh, crypto in general, I mean, it follows these supply and demand zones like just to the T. It really does. I mean, it really does. Imagine like having this like this, all right? Imagine having uh, this zone drawn in because you knew it was a, a demand zone here uh, by looking to the left. And you, you just say, let's just say for shits and gigs uh, that you decided to just load the boat here at this demand zone ad because you believed that it was going to respect it. You would have came in some drawdown here, right? Uh, but you would have made money. Uh, you would have made money. Yes, you would have been in the red. Quite a bit, actually. You would have been down about seven grand uh, if you bought a full coin here. Uh, but you would have made ten grand if you held through it. And it's twice. You could have made ten grand twice. I mean, honestly, I was looking at the fees for Bitcoin. If you go through, a, if you go through like, um, uh, like a broker like Robinhood or even Cash App. You pay like 400 bucks if you buy a coin. If you buy a full coin, it costs like $400 in transaction fees. It's crazy. They, that's why Bitcoin is, I don't know, Ethereum just seems a lot a lot better. Uh, Wes says, did you hear about the Bit, BitMart hack? I did, yeah, 200 million ship. I saw that. I don't know, man. It's all shady. I don't know if it's actually, I don't know about that stuff. That's that's why that's why crypto is like, I don't know, it's kind of scary uh, when you think about it. Uh, people are putting their entire life savings in crypto. And to be honest with you guys, it's not regulated. It could just be pulled out. I mean, they really could just pull the rug on the entire thing. And what are you going to do about it? There's nothing you can do. Uh, so crypto is a little bit scary. I, this is why I'm, I don't know if I'm for or against regulation, but I don't know. But yeah, I did read that. Thank you for the comment. Mr. Bro says, is Mavis finally going to reverse? I hope so, man. I hope so. At some point it will. We already know that. At some point it will. As, imagine Summit just dropping some news that they landed a deal. I mean, it's, it's just going to skyrocket. It's going to skyrocket because everybody knows about it. It's not like it's an unknown stock. It is still a viral stock. Everyone knows about this. They know about this stock. Just based off what happened over here in April, they know what they know about this stock. So if they ever, if they get some real news, uh, like you know, an OEM partnership or I don't know, a buyout, anything, anything of substance like that, uh, this thing is just going to take off, and the shorts are going to cover. And our dreams are going to come true. Some of you have Lambo dreams. Some of you have traveling dreams. It's all going to come true on that day. I promise. Uh, Corey Bixer says, yeah, that hack sucked. But Bitmart announced that they will make their users whole. Uh, well, we'll see what they do. Uh, we'll see. I had, I think I was using Bitmart to buy, uh, what was it? 
I had bought a, some Ethereum on BitMart. Uh, what was it like a year ago? I don't like those. I don't. For some reason, I don't like like KuCoin and BitMart. I just don't like their their platform. It's just uh, not that it's like too difficult to navigate. I just don't like it. Robinhood has spoiled people, man. They have an amazing platform. I mean, I can't even lie about it. Their platform is legit. It's so user friendly. Uh, it's like scarily user friendly. Like if you've never traded a day in your life and you just downloaded Robinhood, I mean, you could figure it out in five seconds. Uh, with BitMart and KuCoin, it's a little bit uh, more work to sell, to buy and sell like Ethereum or whatever on them. It's, it's just, uh, it's, I've even had to YouTube uh, like how to do the, when I first started using that app. It's like, how the hell do I sell this? I had to do a swap and all this other stuff. So uh, yeah, Robinhood, I mean, I feel like their 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 platform can't be beat uh, as far as like ease of using. Uh, you know what I mean? And it sucks that they're such a trash company, but I guess that's what you get. Uh, Bitcoin trying to break 50K. Uh, yeah, it might. It probably will. Hey, it probably will. That was a pretty big dip Bitcoin was on, so I don't know. Uh, but it probably will. I don't know if we come back and test this zone again. RSI on the daily is not technically oversold yet. Uh, we could come back down. Uh, we're right now we're at about 31 on the RSI, so pretty much oversold, but not technically. Anything under 30 is considered oversold. Uh, if we go to four hour, we were way oversold down here on this dip. About 16 on the RSI. Oh my god. Now we're just consolidating right above this zone. You guys can see the consolidation here. Kind of just uh, hanging out. Make sure you guys hit that like button on this video. And if you guys really want to help me out, make sure when, you're, when I'm not streaming, you go play my videos in the background. All right, even if you don't listen to them, just let them run or something. Uh, help me get some view time or whatever. But I've been dropping a few videos sporadically, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, I dropped a Mavis video, uh, you know, a few other videos. I'm trying to do more recorded content uh, because that's just, it's less time consuming, really. I get on there. I do it all in one take. I don't really just sit there and uh, do edits and all this stuff. I just record straight through for like eight minutes, ten minutes, and then I call it a day. Yeah, I wish I could go back to the 2017 me and just put all my money in Bitcoin. Or, or Ethereum. Uh, or both. I would have been uh, sitting all right. In 20, the, the 2021 version of me would be uh, sitting all right. Oh man, it just looks so bullish. Whenever you zoom out on any crypto, it just looks so bullish. I mean, it really does. Any like almost any crypto, it just looks so bullish. Just zoom out to the on a weekly time frame, and you will just it makes you want to buy it. It really does. If we break, if Ethereum breaks this trend line, uh, it's coming down to the 50, just so y'all know. If it breaks the trend line, well, I don't I want to say it's coming to the 50, but it's coming down to this zone for sure. It is coming down to that zone uh, for sure. That's going to be a great spot to load up if it does that. I don't think it will. I think we just continue moving up. But if it does break the trend line, uh, this zone's getting hit. Likely. Well, I don't know. I'm looking at it weekly. I guess we could find it some different zones in here. There's another zone here that obviously it got hit. All right, that guy. And you see how these zones work? I mean, it's it's really not rocket science. I mean, you just look to the left and you find these demand zones, and it comes down and then it bounces out of them. It's just like uh, they just respects them really, really well. Hey, did you drop that link to the Apple uh, news uh, where they're trying to find LiDAR company? Uh, drop that link in the in the comments so I can click it.
I mean, these zones just work. They just work. They do. We uh, just broke that 50 SMA on the hourly on Ethereum, so maybe... Uh, maybe it's over. You see the 50 SMA kind of just uh, curving up. Oh, my bad. I don't know. Uh, if we break that trend line, we might run. We might run up to about, uh, let's see, what's this big demand zone? Or supply zone here. Somewhere up in here, maybe. Around 42.50 again. And this is a one hour time frame, just so y'all know. Kind of short term. I mean, we just crossed the MACD, just crossed the 50 SMA, and we're about we we tested above that trend line. I don't know. I think we're coming up here. I think if we close above that trend line on like a 30 minute, we're definitely gonna find our way up into this supply zone. And that's just based off, you know, what I'm seeing right now. I can only stream till about 11. 20, maybe 1130. Thank y'all for being here though. I appreciate it. Uh, make, like, again, make sure you guys hit that like button on this video and drop a comment. If you want me to look at a stock or something for you, I will look at it. If you guys want to uh, join the YouTube fam, hit that join button under this video. It's there for you to do it if you want to do it. As it stands, Mavis 625 on the ticker. I can't believe I can say Mavis at 625. That is insane. I still can't believe that. That's crazy. That is crazy. At some point, we're going to just rip. Uh, the market's going to correct, and we're just going to freaking rip. It is going to be crazy. And I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen one day. I don't know when, uh, but one day it's going to happen, and it's going to be insane. And I hope I'm here to stream it. AMC. Oh, yeah, I forgot about AMC. I mean, again, just another zone, uh, perfect zone touch. I, I mean, I can't make this crap up. I didn't even, I don't even check these charts, really. Uh, but this zone got hit perfectly. You could have scalped here, day traded here, made some money. Uh, but it did break out of this wedge, so I don't know. I mean, short term, obviously, doesn't look that great. Uh, RSI probably is oversold. Not oversold, but getting there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically oversold. Uh, right at 30 on the RSI on the daily. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, if it gets back above that golden zone, it could run. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, uh, this thing is heavily manipulated. But they're spending so much money, guys, to do this. I mean, you really have no idea. I think that people are going to be shocked when they ever, if they ever give up. Uh, which I don't think they'll do. I think they'll, I think they'll burn their entire institution to the ground, uh, before they give up billions of dollars. Uh... At some point, I mean, with all the synthetic shares and all the illegal crap going on with, you know, with just the market in general, if they ever do anything about it, they are screwed. But it's not going to happen. It's, I, don't think, I don't think the SEC is ever going to do anything about it because I think they're in on it. I think they're in on it. So I don't think they're ever going to really do anything. Uh, we're just going to have to hold. But I think this has become, like I said, AMC has become kind of like a... <clears throat> excuse me, like a, I don't know, it's a whole community, man, I mean, I, I mean, what do you do when they unite, this is like a prime example of like, what happens when, when, you know, quote unquote, sheeple unite, I mean, it's like, look what happens, uh, you gotta spend money to, to fight against them, and that's why they divide the world the way they don't want to get into politics today, but that's why they do what they do in the world, not just the stock market, because when people start uniting against the bigger groups, this is what happens, they get screwed, all right, we win with numbers, we just hold, yeah, we own, what, 80%? Of the float we own? Is that what it is on AMC? I mean, I believe 80% of, of all the shares outstanding we own. How do you fight that? How do you beat that if everyone's holding? You literally can't. And you just can't. I mean, at some point, I mean, 
you know, Trey's Trades and all these people, they're right. I mean, if everyone holds uh, just forever and just says, screw it, I don't care about that money, I don't care if you take us to a dollar, uh, whatever, you could spend 20 billion more dollars bringing this down, we're never selling ever no matter what, uh, then yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely going to squeeze at some point. I mean, hey, it just is. The numbers make sense when you look at it like that, but I mean, I don't know. It seems to be like kind of a cult at this point. How many people are going to sell at this point? I don't think any, I think that's like the main thing people uh, think about with AMC. It's like, all right, the goal here is the, the, the play is just to never sell no matter what. Uh, no matter what, we're never selling. They can run it to $1, we're never selling. So that's, that's the play with AMC. And I think that people know that. And so as an institution, it's probably hard uh, and very, very, very expensive to fight against that. I mean, they're paying premium prices to, to do what they're doing with this thing. So uh, keep that in mind. They're definitely doing this. They have to, because if they don't, it goes up. So they have to spend money on the daily basis, you know, and they have to do illegal shit to keep this from doing what it's uh, been said it's going to do. And so I think AMC is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just hilarious to me. It's hilarious to watch the institutions scattering around like cockroaches, because I know they're scared. You, you know they're scared. They're trying their best. Uh, they're trying their best to make this thing uh, <laughs> go away. I don't know if it's going <laughs> to. I don't know if it's going to. I think the sheeple are the shib people. I don't know. I got, I got a $3,500 shib scratch off. Hey, if it goes, it goes. If not... Uh, whatever. I'm I'm not gonna sell the ship. I'm just gonna hold that. Uh, if it does what it if it does it it does it. It's getting pretty big though. Uh, ship is getting uh, pretty viral, man. I don't know. I, I feel like getting listed on Kraken is pretty big, and I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. But hey, I kind of went on a little rant there about AMC. But I do think that if everyone holds this, uh, if you look at the numbers and you look at everything that's going on with this stock, if you hold it. I think GameStop and AMZ, I mean, they could just literally just squeeze. I mean, I just no really other thing to say about it. Uh, when they, when it happens, it happens. You're just going to have to hold through all the, the rocky roadness. James Jones says, I'm buying Mavis under seven bucks all day. All right, good stuff, man. Good stuff. I think you'll be happy. Uh, Joseph says, do you remember the price Mavis was at when you started streaming? I don't. Uh, I, I actually don't. I don't. I think, I have no idea, actually. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'd have to go back and, I'd have to go back and look. I'm not too sure. I am not too sure. It's a good question, though. Uh, right now, but AMC right now at 28.66. Uh, so, yeah. We can really get rid of all this. Uh, this doesn't even matter anymore. Let's draw some new stuff. Alright, uh, let's see. I mean, if this thing did a 50% retracement on this move, it would put us back about, 34, about $35. And... Uh, right above the golden zone is that 50 so if we get above you know 38 dollars uh we could move we could move slick rick says apple is apparently looking for lidar uh yeah someone else said that in the chat i'll have to, I'll have to check that out uh after the stream today interesting i mean yeah i mean like i said camera systems can do stuff but uh not as well as lidar how can a camera be better than freaking lasers man I mean, really. Cameras can't see through fog, can they? I don't think they can. Maybe they can. Maybe like with infrared or something, right? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that guy. I don't know about that tech. Maybe someone in here knows. But it seems to me that LiDAR would be a much better uh, <laughs> way to, you know, see things in the dark and uh, whatever than a camera system like Tesla has. Uh, let's check out Luminar. What are they trading at right now? All right, Luminar. Uh, they are trading at fourteen forty nine. All right, so even Luminar, who just struck a deal, uh, who they strike a deal with? I forget. Anybody know? I don't want to go look. I'm lazy. Uh, who did Luminar strike a deal with? I forgot who it was. But they just struck a deal, and even they are on a downtrend. So the whole lidar sector is really just getting wrecked. 
uh, in general. Hey, what's up, man? Guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'm trying. I'm gonna try to do Twitter more. Uh, I'll be posting some TA on Twitter. Twitter uh, slash Tremo James. Oh, Nvidia. Was it Nvidia? All right, yeah, you're right. I, I think you're right, actually. I think you're right. I knew Nvidia was gonna pop. Guys, back here. Uh, let me look at this real quick. Back here when this was, I think it was 2018. I told everybody that Nvidia was gonna rip. I remember, like, I wasn't, like, uh, doing YouTube back here, but I remember telling my friends, I was like, we would game back in 2018, we had a group of gaming, uh, like, kind of like a guild, and I told everyone, I was like, hey, guys, NVIDIA is about to pop off, because I was looking at the charts, and I was like, look, we just, if we break that 50 SMA, I, was, I remember, I remember telling them this, I remember, and it played out exactly, I said, don't, don't take the breakout, take the retest, because that's back when I was really hardcore into, into the last kiss, on forex and I was like on the uh, you know when this when the, on the weekly time frame when it hits that 50 again take the buy and I didn't do it because I'm dumb uh, but look what happened here crazy growth crazy 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 oh my god it's crazy and this wasn't even that long ago man like six, 2016 you could buy Nvidia for six dollars and sixty cents that is insane Barry says I follow you on Twitter, but I use my real name. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Uh, you have a good name. Barry, your cock. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Hey, what's up, Darius Gunia? I hope I said that right. Thank you for the comment. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Man, I haven't seen you in here before, but I would appreciate you hitting the like button and that subscribe. Uh, what do I think with Mavis? I think that, well, let me go back because we just talked about it, but I'll... Uh, right now we are in a like if we zoom out to a weekly time frame we look to the left back in 2009 We had a really big rip out of the zone. I'm hoping that's what happens again. I'm not sure. I'm not positive, but uh, if we look here Big rip right out of the zone Went from about six dollars and twenty five cents up to about forty six dollars And right now we are back down to that zone uh, So I'm hope I'm hoping that we rip if not we might just continue trickling down in this descending wedge down to this demand zone here and find the demand here. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, this is, I just feel like we've been given a gift, uh, to be honest, because it's like, this is, something's going to happen one day. I, I say, I'm going in circles with it, but something's going to happen one day uh, with Microvision, guys. Either we strike an OEM deal or they get bought out or something is going to happen or we just keep, I mean, I don't know, something's going to happen. And we're going to have a really, really violent reversal. I, I truly believe that. I truly believe that. So, uh, I, w I just feel like we've been given a gift here. And if we do get down here, I'm hoping the liquidity that I have coming in uh, is freed up in the next week or two. Because I'd like to put it in. I'd like to add like another 10000 in here, to be honest. If we get down to the zone, I would love, love to add another 10000 here. Just average down real hard. And have a sub seven dollar average that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. What are you guys average on Mavis? Throw your throw your share count in the chat and your average. I want to see where you guys are sitting. <clears throat> uh, Darius says sold off some of my Boeing shares and wanting to invest lower right now. Holder of the of nine hundred forty shares at fourteen eighty one. All right. Well, hey, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. But if you have an average like that around 1481, this is a perfect time for you to average down, dude. It really is. I mean, if you have 940 shares, that's quite a bit. So I mean, you could I if you have the liquidity to do it, I would I would highly suggest thinking about it. I'm not saying do it, I can't tell you that. But I would suggest thinking about it. Uh anywhere in this zone really down to about $4, basically $5. Uh anywhere between now and $5 is a perfect time to load up and drop that average. Uh, because if it ever even goes back to 25 bucks, uh, you're going to be making a killing. Yeah, you'll be making a killing. And it will be back to 25 bucks. Mark my words. I I don't want to guarantee it, but I'm telling you, it's going back to $25 at least. It will. I'm telling you. I One day it's going to go. It's going to just rip. And we're going to be like, holy shit. Uh, Lynn says I'm in the 16s. All right, that's not, that's not too bad. Uh, that's not too bad. In the long term, that's not too bad. I know it's hard to buy when people are selling. 
But that's how these things work. All right, supply and demand. You gotta buy where people where where the fear is. That's just how it works. And I know it's hard to do, and it's weird to do it, right? You see all this red. You're a new trader, maybe. You're, maybe you're not a new trader, and you're just not very versed in price action. But the trick is to buy uh, where retail traders are selling, because that's where the institutions are buying. All right, and the trick is if you're trying to scalp or day trade, you're trying to sell where retail traders are buying. That's just kind of how it goes. But if we know that retail traders are selling here based off fear, then at some point it's going to reverse. And that's that's when you try to got to try to get in. Dax said I'm at $12 average down. Nice. Uh, Derry says you think we'll go lower based on the daily chart. I don't know. On the daily time frame, I feel like it has potential to come down to the zone. Uh, if we close below this yellow line, then yes, I think it's it's likely going <clears> to <throat> at a bare minimum test this demand zone. All right. So, if we close below that yellow line on a daily, I think it, I think it is going to come down to about 550. I think, I think it will. Yes. So it's worth, it's worth waiting. If you're going to try to average down, it's worth waiting a day or two just to see what happens. Because, like I said, if we break this yellow line and close on the daily, we're probably coming down to this uh, demand zone down here. So, uh, yeah, I do think there's some potential for more downside uh, based off what I'm looking at. Uh, isn't desktop metal like a 3d printing company i don't know too much about it uh to be honest with you i, I think i know that that is a, a like a uh, 3d printing company but i haven't looked too much at it uh wednesday that sounds about right i mean like i said just look for it i mean draw this line in on your chart and look for it to close uh below that yellow line if it closes below that yellow line uh you're almost like not guaranteed but there's a very high high probability chance that it's coming down to this demand zone. All right, if we close below the yellow line, uh, it just is. I hate to say it, I don't want it to, but that's this is uh, this is likely happening if we continue what's going on. Hey, Headstock Harem, good morning, man. Uh, good morning, good morning. And I mean, guys, it's not it's not the end of the world to wait. I mean, if you miss it, you miss it. But I don't think I, I think there's some potential for downside. So I'd be careful. But even if you did, even if you did average down right now, like right this second at six dollars and 30 cents or whatever it is, six twenty four. And it does come down a little bit. That's not the end of the world. You still have a uh, you still have a pretty low average for when it does regain its strength. Right. I mean, obviously, you want to get it at its lowest point, but sometimes it's kind of hard to do that, especially when it's. A highly manipulated stock like this. I know, man. I know. Uh, trust me, we're all there with you. We're all shocked about this, but ah, <sighs> we know we hold, man. Uh, we know we hold. I try to give everybody positive affirmation about the stock. Uh, it sucks that we're down here, but I, like I said, I feel like it's a gift. I really do. I try to look at it in a positive way. Yeah, we're down really low, but it's allowed everyone to average down and if you believed in the stock enough to buy in the 20s then i mean you should uh you should have conviction uh still right i mean nothing's changed about the stock business wise technology wise we have it it's there uh it's just being manipulated that's it it's being it's being ladder attack down it's being ladder attack down that's all that's happening so at some point it will stop it just will i mean, it just will i don't know it could be a year it could be two years. It could be a month. It could be a day. At some point, it will end, and we will have low averages. It's kind of how I'm looking at it. Give me one second.
All right. All right, so with all the negatives, let's get some rockets in the chat for Mavis. All right, I know it's hard. Let's get some rockets up in the chat for Microvision, guys. Oh my God. One day, man, one day. Uh, this thing is gonna pop off. It's gonna be insane. And we're all gonna be sitting here watching this on the stream and I'm gonna catch it and it's gonna be absolutely freaking beautiful to watch this thing reverse and get back up to where we know it should be. Uh, where we know it deserves to be. Imagine an OEM deal. I can't even I can't even imagine the violent spike that's gonna happen uh, if and when we get a some kind of news of a partnership or something. I mean that's just gonna be crazy. Uh, that is gonna be crazy. So, let's get some rocks in the chat for Mavis. Uh, Mavis, everyone that averaged down, touche. Touche to you. I'm waiting for that little lower dip, just so you guys, I'll show you the zone one more time before I change it. I'm waiting for this. And really, I probably would have already did it, to be honest with you. If I had that uh, liquidity coming in and it was cleared in my, in my Weeble account, I would have probably did it in this zone, uh, somewhere up in here. But... I hope, I hope I can get it before it bounces out of this zone, because I think, I don't know how much lower this thing can go. I really don't. I mean, how far can Mavis really go down? This is crazy. Uh, our short interest is about, uh, it's right here, I mean, uh, you can see. 18.87% of the float is shorted. Short interest, 30.58 million. So out of all, out of the 162.01 million shares on the public float, 30 and a half million of them are shorted. That's insane. That is, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's just, I mean, it's so manipulated. It is so, I don't even think shorting should be legal. Take shorting out of the game and we just win. Remove shorting and we win. Let the company grow, man. My God. Why can they do that? It's crazy. That's why I love Forex. Uh, that's why I love Forex. Uh, it doesn't matter which way it goes. I don't care, right? Uh, with Forex, it doesn't matter. I just I find my setup. If it breaks the top side, I, I get in. If it breaks the bottom side, I get in. Stocks are different. For me to make money, this thing has to go up. I, I guess I can make money going down if I want to, uh, you know, buy puts or whatever. I, I really am, to be honest with you, I'm not really playing the options game. I'm just not. I mean, I, I could be easily. I'm just not. And there's no real reason for it. I mean, I'm just not. You could hedge. You could hedge your bets here. You could hedge your positions with some with some short positions. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I mean, you could definitely do it uh, if you know what you're doing. It's not that difficult. I'm just not for whatever reason. I'm just. I'm just not. <laughs> uh, I got till about 11:30, guy. I got about 15 minutes left on the stream. I got to get up and do some stuff. But make sure you guys hit that like button on the video, all right, before you leave. And if you guys want to join the YouTube fam and uh, support my work and what I'm doing on this channel, uh, hit that join button under this video. You can choose three levels of support. One's like three bucks a month. So what, like a cup of coffee a month? We got a few whales too. We got a few whales in there. All right, we got five whales uh, total. Maybe it's six. Uh, Mesa. I think you mean Mavis. I think you mean Mavis. Uh, but like I said, Anti-M, um, anywhere, I'm looking to add on that 10k, somewhere between $5, uh, 535 and 570, 565. So 535, 565, that's gonna be a demand zone. Uh, and really, if I widen it a little bit, anywhere between five dollars and 555 right something like that uh but yeah uh cory bixler says hey, uh, tmj are you still doing keto hey i'm glad you asked no i'm not right this second no i'm not i i i did it for months and i kind of fell off but i actually was just thinking about getting back on it because i lost a bit of weight so <clears throat> excuse me i think uh yeah in the next couple days i was actually thinking about getting back on for a couple more months and finishing up the job but thank you for asking i appreciate you Keto is no joke, man. It's hard to get on it, but once you get on it, it's really not that it's really not that hard to stay on it. I you, I mean, you don't really need 
sugar, processed sugar at all. You don't need processed sugar, and you don't need all this, uh, uh, you know, all these carbs and everything. I, I felt really good on keto, to be honest. Uh, less carbs just make you feel better. It's weird. Once you get into ketosis, getting into ketosis is freaking hard. All right, it's, I mean, well, it's not hard, but it's, um, it's not fun. <laughs> we'll put it that way. <laughs> getting in ketosis is not fun. Uh, you're welcome, Antio. No worries. Uh, no worries, no worries. Barry says you hear about the banks that got busted running that Forex scandal last week. Uh, no, I did not. I did, what's, what was the scandal? How was it? What was it? Let me know. I have not been trading Forex the last couple weeks, so I've been kind of just hanging out. Let me know about it. I, I'm interested. Oh, man, I can tell I don't stream too, stream enough. My voice is already starting to get shot here. Uh, an hour and... Oh, we're an hour and two minutes into the stream. Oh, we just broke that. All right, we just broke that trend line. Uh, just like we just saw this happen right now. On Ethereum. All right, so now now if we close, if we close on this one hour above this, uh, which we did, uh, we're probably we're guys. We're probably coming up here. I think the dip is over on Ethereum. We're de we're gonna definitely gonna come test the supply zone, uh, like almost for sure. At this point, we just broke it back above that 50 SMA on the one hour time frame. I think we're coming up and testing this at a bare minimum. 42.50 at a bare minimum. Uh, Headstock Harem says, Fasting helps tremendously too. Did seven days with no food once. Not the easiest thing to do. Oh, yeah. The most I fasted, I think was... God, the most... The, I did a 24-hour uh, fast one time. It wasn't as hard as I thought. I don't think I could do seven days. I don't think I could do that. That's crazy. I mean, maybe, I mean, if I had to, I guess, but uh, that's that's a, that's quite a long time to go. But I imagine the euphoria and, uh, the, you know, you probably feel pretty good, at, you know, when you do it. I've read people on Facebook doing uh, seven day fasts and they report like crazy euphoria and like just crazy stuff. So I, I started to get some euphoria like a day in. So I can imagine seven days. That's uh, that's pretty hardcore. That is pretty hardcore, my friend. All right, consolidating on Mavis here on the one hour. Not not bad uh, that we're consolidated. 631 on the ticker. Not bad that we're just consolidating here. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I hope we don't break this yellow line, but if we do, uh, like I said, guys, uh, probably coming down to the zone. Probably coming down to the zone if we break and close that yellow line. Just letting y'all know. Barclays, RBS, HSBC, Credit Suisse, and UBS busted for discussing their trading plans and manipulation. Dude, it's, this whole thing is so rigged. I mean, as long as I've been trading, I feel like every day that goes by, I just realize the manipulation more and more and more. It's like worse than casinos. And casinos aren't even like, they're not even like manipulated. Like it just is what it is. You're, you're gambling with bad odds. I, you know it. In the stock market, you, most people don't know it. They don't know uh, the actual manipulation uh, going on here with synthetic shares, naked shorting, all this stuff that they can do illegally to you and your freaking account. They don't, they don't know about it. They just invest because somebody said, to, said something. They don't really know about the manipulation. It's crazy. I, I truly can't believe that it's allowed. I mean, I, I really can't. It's 100% illegal what they do. No doubt, no gray area, none of that. It's 100% illegal what they do in these markets.
What's the price for the zone? Uh, like I said, between $5 and $5.55. That's probably where we're coming down. Uh, I widened the zone down here. These are actually two demand zones uh, combined. So that first zone, if, I mean, this, these, they're smaller zones. If that first one doesn't hold up, which is this one, basically 540 to 560, then I just widened it here to the, to the next one down, which is, like I said, between $5 and $5.55, basically. Basically. But that's if we close below that yellow line. If we close below this yellow line. And I found that yellow line by looking at the weekly time frame and looking back in 2009. If you're looking at the chart and you're not and you're you're actually looking at my screen, uh, this is the zone that we went from six dollars and twenty-three cents up to forty-six dollars. So forty dollar swing out of the zone in 2009 so I'm hoping I'm hoping it holds up I really am what makes sense they don't even get fined millions that's what's messed up they don't even get fined millions they get fined like a couple hundred thousand it's like <laughs> it's like a joke it's a joke It is a freaking joke. Markets are insane lately. Yeah, they are. I've never seen it like this. They're absolutely, absolutely ins insane right now. So volatile. And it's just crazy, man. All the all stocks are like this. I haven't seen one stock that's not super volatile right now. They're all crazy. And, uh, you know, Mavis is not excluded from that list. All right, we've done a basically a 78% retracement. Uh, we've done a 78% retracement from the beginning of this move. All right, look. Seventy-eight point six percent retracement uh, from the top. Now, keep in mind that was kind of inflated here, and I think a lot of that did up to the Reddit. But regardless, we've done a huge retracement. All right, and we might come down to the 50. Like I said, there's some potential for downside if we look at the higher, higher time frames. The 50 SMA is down here at about. Three dollars and eighty-eight cents uh, on the monthly time frame. Now I'm not saying it's going to come down there, but I mean a lot of the time on the higher time frames, price does price does come to those that 50 SMA. So the previous 50 months, uh, that is the average here, and right now it's about 388. Uh, let me zoom back in a little bit and get a little average, more accurate. Yeah, about 388, 388 to 390. So I mean I I wouldn't be shocked. If it did come down there, uh, based off just knowing that price usually touches the SMAs, but I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. It's hard to say. It's it's very hard to say. I don't want to make that prediction because I I don't necessarily believe it. But uh, we'll see. We're gonna find out. That's for sure. If there's one thing that's for sure is that we're gonna find out. It definitely could. I mean, like I said, if you if you look at the monthly time frame, all right, if it breaks that demand zone here, there's nothing stopping it from going down there. I mean, look, I'm going to show you guys this. Look at the screen. All right, so this would be the next zone down if we came down here, okay? Uh, if it breaks that zone, like I said, if it breaks below like 575, I don't, I don't think that 388 is out of the question. I don't, I don't think it's out of the question, and it might not be... It might not come down to three dollars, all right, but I think that that 50 SMA uh, that could get tested if we break this zone. Because, like I said, if you look on the chart, there's no structure in here. There's almost no structure. Well, there is no structure in here. All right, there's none really on the higher time frame. So we could likely, if we break this zone and we continue coming down that wedge, we could come down and test the 50 SMA, 388. That's where that's that's sitting right now on the higher time frame. But like I said. I don't necessarily believe that, and I don't know exactly how far down this can go. I mean, really, I mean, it's already made a huge, huge retracement. I mean, how, like I said, even on the upside, there's got to be some point where it pulls back. Same thing with the downside. When is it going to do a 50% retracement to the upside? We have to know where the bottom is. If we pull, let's, let's just pretend for a second. Give me one second. My voice is slowly dying. Before I sign off, I want to show you guys this. Uh, 
at some point we will find a bottom at some point we will find a bottom and we can then pull a fib i don't know if this zone is the bottom or the 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 50 is the bottom let's pretend that the 50 sma is the bottom then we can use a fib and do this when where is a 50 percent retracement putting us i mean if that's the actual bottom here we know that on a big move like this it's gonna do a 50 percent pullback i mean at some point so if if we do come down to 388 a 50% pullback would put us back at $15, all right and that's just a 50% pullback even a 38% pullback puts us at 1310 and even a shallow retracement like 236 puts us back at 950 all right so like i said we got to find the bottom first but i'm using the bottom i'm using just you know the the 50 SMA on the monthly time frame as the bottom if that is the bottom now if we pull the bottom from this zone then a 50% retracement puts us back at like $17. A 38% retracement puts us back at like $14.25. And a shallow retracement of 23.6 puts us back around $11. So at some point, we're going to reverse, guys. And we're going to get a big move. I'm telling you. I don't know when, but we're going to do it at some point. We will find a bottom at some point. And at that bottom, if it closes back above the 23.6 and then the 38.2, that 50 is not looking too bad. So I think, like I said... At some point, we'll know what's up. At some point, we will know. I hope it I hope it doesn't come down to 388 because I'm going to be loading up here in that zone I showed you guys. So I hope it doesn't. But if it does, it is what it is. I'll take a $6, $7 average all day on this stock. I really will. All right, I got to take off, guys. I appreciate you all for being here. All right, make sure you guys hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I got to take off and do some things for the day. I appreciate you all very much. And I will see you guys on the next stream, all right? Peace and love. See you guys later.